Play this is the chords of cry of love and i recently finished the oddly freed three for all and in that episode i mentioned i was going to put this episode together which is a look at some of his chords and rhythm work back when he was working with cry of love and cry of love formed in raleigh north carolina in 1989 and went on to become very popular in the early 90s after their album brother hit the scene in 1993 definitely blew up and had some airplay on mtv and on the radio kind of hit the charts or at least dented the charts and I, I remember hearing that album and I thought, who is this? Because it was strikingly different in that early to mid, you know, 90s period when the 80s hard rock and metal started to disappear and then you started to notice all this alternative, you know, and grunge music from Seattle. But Cry of Love was different because it was this rootsy blues rock kind of funky, like I mentioned, you know, Hendrix and Bad Company and some of those sounds. So they were a 90s band, but definitely had the 70s kind of vibe, which was so cool. So Cry of Love technically only had two albums. They had Brother in 1993, and they followed that with another album, Diamonds and Debris, in 1996. I think that album had a different singer, but definitely the lineup was the same. Oddly was, you know, still the, the guitarist in both those lineups. And both of those albums are overlooked gems of the 90s. You know, if you're not really hip to Cry of Love and you like blues rock and Hendrix and, you know, that 70s kind of blues rock vibe, then you're going to totally love Cry of Love because that's their style. And this episode is really going to shed some light on that, you know, really cool kind of funky blues rock style that Oddly's had since Cry of Love. And he's continued to have, you know, working with Black Crows and Government Mule and a whole bunch of people. So anyway, here we go. The opening, that's the song Highway Jones from the Brother album. And I remember back in the day, one of my old friends I used to work at a record store with held this album up and he said, what do you think about Cry of Love? And I looked at him and I was like, I don't even know who that is. And he put it on, and this is the first thing I heard. This very, you know, distinct Hendrix kind of vibe, too. Starts with some muted strums. And right there, you're basically playing C-sharp minor 7, or an implied C-sharp minor 7. I guess really just C-sharp minor, because you're not really hitting that B. It's really just the root note, and then the, the minor 3rd and the 5th there. kind of single note, real bluesy riff. And then right there. Totally a Hendrix vibe, but big time right there. And right there you got that. And then you have a series of these different fills. The first time it's and then you go right back into that C-sharp minor 7. And once again, there's some Hendrix-y kind of double stop, you know, those soul and R&B fills there. And right back to that C-sharp minor 7. The second time, just grab double stops right there. And then do it again. sharp again and there you're just kind of stepping your way down and then ending 
on that C sharp and it goes right in the verse there. You know, really cool song and I love rhythm parts like that. It's so funky and rocking out. as you please from the brother album and it's something like this <laughs> Starts with this kind of Hendrixy, you know, intro. And the kind of muted strum with the trill. And then you hear the riff change to this. So right there, it's you know, B to C sharp, the open D kind of slight bend on that G note there on the low E to the low E open. And then the Hendrix chord. You know, E7 sharp 9 right there. Then you hear the change again right here. So it's basically like an E5. Change to that G root note, so it's kind of like a G6. I love that little twist, it's very simple, but it sounds great. And then a D5, C sharp minor 7 implied, and then you got this riff. like that, especially this part. Next up is Fire in the Dry Grass from the Diamond and Debris album, and it's something like this. just kind of rock riff like that so you're literally just kind of smearing this G into that A power chord and it's kind of a muted strum so go to that A power chord then go to E and then the B and the high E open right there and do it again and again So you're doing, and you're literally kind of playing with this A, but then you're kind of implying like a D over F sharp just for a second, and then A, and then you that. And right here, you're basically kind of moving into this, uh, it's an A over C sharp. And normally you would see these uh, kind of moves maybe on the, the A, D, and G. And here we're on the low E, A, and D, which is really cool. Get that really low kind of sound.
Next up is the song Sweet Mary's Gone from the Diamond and Debris album, and it sounds like he's using a univibe. It's this kind of quieter, swirly, you know, intro like this. <laughs> smearing his way and then you hear him move to B right there and he's kind of grabbing that with his thumb. I guess you could also play this in open position but I had more luck doing it right there. So right there you're smearing that D into that B note and then this F sharp into that A. change to E and then it's like E7 right there like a little switch so there's B minor 6 and then E7 and you hear it change to this So right there it's B minor 7 after that E7, you got those single notes, and then that's where you hear that B minor 7, and then you're moving between that A and that G sharp. Next up is Too Cold in the Winter from the Brother album, and it's this hybrid pick kind of twangy riff like this. <laughs> you know, really interesting, and you're grabbing the, the high E and B open, and then you're gonna grab this A note with the low E, and you're gonna bend that basically up a whole step. And you're doing... doing like a slight bend on that F sharp to G like up a half step and then you're grabbing that D note back to that E and it has this really interesting kind of smeared sound with those bends you know, really unusual but I like those kind of sneaky bends in there Last but not least is the song Peace Pipe, which definitely put Cry of Love on the map back in the day, even though they didn't really continue past the 90s, but it was definitely a popular song. And Peace Pipe is something like this. <laughs> part you're basically just banging a B power chord and then after you do the power chord you're grabbing the root then the flat 7 that A and then you're gonna hammer on E to F sharp and then end on that A so it's kind of an interesting riff even though it's really simple but it's rhythmically interesting because it kind of has that hiccup and then after you repeat that endlessly, then you eventually hear it move to this B5 way up here. And then it 
also kind of implying like a little piece of F sharp minor, I guess, to E. And then you hear this really cool fill. So right there, it's like all double stops, and I think he's also hybrid picking right there. And then this, you know, D to E, A to B. oddly because he does stuff like that all the time whether it's you know cry of love or black crows or some of the more recent stuff with Cheryl Crow and some of those people he's working with but I love stuff like that <laughs> That's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Cry of Love. And I've talked to a lot of people about this band over the years, and it seems like a lot of people just completely have forgotten about Cry of Love. They might remember Oddly, but they don't really remember this music. And if you haven't heard Brother or Diamonds and Debris, dive in. They're great albums, especially if you're a blues rock, kind of a funky, you know, 70s blues rock fan, which I'm a huge, you know, blues rock fan. But definitely this just strikes a chord with me when I hear it. You know, definitely doing the research and putting this lesson together. I revisited a lot of these songs, and it was like, man, I forgot how good this music actually was until I put this episode together. So dive in. It's great. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.